So just getting you a, a, a quick way of, of downloading uh, MRS MATLAB. Some people may know that there is this, uh, I, I don't have any slides prepared, but you can, can, go, into, can go into the browser and type in this, this GitHub. It's a, uh, it's a completely open way. There's, there's a second GitLab, which is for the developers to, to upload things. Um, but from time to time, and you're right, the last one was, I guess, two years ago. I'm sorry for that. Um, so I have uploaded the most recent version six days ago. Um, so that, that should be, uh, that should work. In it, and it also has a couple of, of new features. Um, so you can simply download this um, from, from this GitHub account. Um, and then you go to, to MATLAB and the, the, something that people sometimes forget is there is a so-called GUI layout toolbox from, from MATLAB that you need to, need to install. Um, because that's the only dependency that we have. Of course, always someone has dependencies. So that's the only thing that we have. Um, do you need MATLAB? Do you need MATLAB? Or... Yes, they, okay. In, in, in MATLAB, we, we, we have two toolboxes that we use, which is the optimization toolbox and the signal processing toolbox. When you have that, those at hand, it runs more smoothly. Um, MRS MATLAB checks um, whether or not, I don't know, don't want to do an update. Um, checks if these uh, toolboxes are available. Um, um, there are some functions that I have written instead of using these toolboxes, they are not as fast as uh, the MATLAB toolboxes are, but they work as well. Sometimes they crash. Um, so not, not that stable, not that fast. So if you have these toolboxes, it runs better. Um, if you don't have them, it works, but not as stable. So actually that's that's how it is. Okay, so so once you are going to, to, to the path where you have downloaded uh, all, the, all the MATLAB files, um, the only thing you need to do is start uh, start MS MATLAB, and actually you're going to see nothing. Uh, what what is going on behind the scenes is nothing else than setting all the paths that are that are needed. Um, and once you have done this, you can you can start. Uh, typically, you start with. Um, with the MRS signal processing. And I think that's the most important thing for the moment because um, you would need it for Comet as well as processing any, any data. Um, so it should start, I hope. Okay, then you get this screen and um, this way here. The most important thing is, of course, load some some raw data. And what I have prepared is one data set. Let's see where I have this one. Oh, let me check. This is a GMR data, but with numerous data, it works quite the same way. So for GMR data, you just select um, the folder, and then as for, for Trevor, you, you need to select the header file. Um, it automatically uh, detects whether you want to load a numerous data set, a MIDI data set, or a GMR data set. Uh, you always have to select the folder where your, your raw data is in, and um, MRS Metal looks into this folder and automatically automatically sees if it's new MIS or GMR data, and then selects the, the other things that need to be done. Um, and when uh, it comes along with some, some GMR data, it needs a bit more information, uh, some information about the 
about the loops that we have here and uh, what is the, uh, the purpose of these loops. So you need to type in a few informations. Zero is always this loop is not connected. And in this case, we had just a coincident loop sounding uh, within receiver loop. So you give it a one because it's, the, it's your receiver. You can also add, if you have a reference loop, then it gets a number two. Um, and it is the same loop is taken as, as the TX as well. Um, and then you you can type in, okay, this, this loop was a circular loop. These informations are, are, kept, uh, are, are stored and you can reuse them in the kernel calculation later on. So it's worth to type in these informations here. And then he is start importing. One out of 16 files and I hope it's gonna, it's gonna work. Now he, he, it's running, so it's now what well, it was 16 files, so it's importing all these 16 files. And then you end up with a figure like this. And to me, still, um, the most important thing is having a look at your data and having a very detailed look at your data, and not only use, use processing as a black box typing something somewhere, put it in and get it out. I really like to have a, a very detailed view on, on my data and that's what you have here. Um, and what what is mostly done in this in this figure. So you can select what record you are talking about. Let's go for record number seven. So this, this changes on, on the left side here. And here is the uh, real and imaginary part and the, the frequency spectrum. Um, I should say that MRS MATLAB always displays the envelope, but just for display. Behind the scenes, we're always talking about raw data, so the 50 kilohertz sampling data. Um, and then on the on the middle here, you see already the, the stacked. Um, in this case, we had 16 stacks. So this is uh, the stack of 16. Um, and you can change also the, the pulse moment. Let's go for, for one pulse moment which has NMR data, I think. Yeah, this is number nine. Um, and besides the stack data for real and imaginary part, you always have already the, uh, the stack data for all your pulse moments. So this is going from, from number one to number 13, and you have already gated your data. And so, so this figure here is giving you directly an overview on your, on complete data set that you have at hand. Um, the other ones here is giving you now the um, the frequency spectrum of the same data set. And on the bottom here, you have the, 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 the pulse moment. So pulse moment number nine at the moment, and your 16 stacks. And from this uh, frequency spectrum, you already learn a lot. Uh, you learn where you have spikes. You learn where you have um, harmonic noise. Um, if, if you look at, at this guy here, um, this is your uh, your NMR frequency, and you have the smaller bands here, these guys, and those guys, and these is uh, the harmonic frequencies. You already see them. Also see them here. Um, of the stacking, this is the peak of your NMR frequency. Um, the the uh, harmonics are gone a little bit. Um, you see them better in the single in the single stack, but that's what I mean with having a look at the different um, data representation. You also see, for instance, uh, a spike here. Let's let's go to to this one here, which is a bit lighter blue. Just for comparison, this is number four. And this guy has no spikes. Why do I see this from the spectrum? Um, this spectrum is, is lifted, and that's what, what what spikes are doing. So that's what I mean by having a, a visual view to your data. You can scroll through all the things that you have and directly get an, a good idea. Is the data good? Is it bad? Where I have to work on? Um, 
at least I have selected the data set. I guess it's, it must be Schiller's lager. Um, there's not much bad things inside here, but, but you could learn it already from this one. Okay, which of my queues is not good? Then I go into the queues, which of the stacks is not good? And then you can do all the, all the processing, processing stuff. So you can do, um, let's give it a try, uh, remove power line. You can, you can uh, keep all the other things. This episode, you, are, uh, you can remove spikes, of course. Uh, you can do the harmonic modeling, remote reference, and all this stuff. Um, but just as an example, I do now harmonic noise cancellation. Nothing happens. There is a little, okay, there, there's not much in here. You see, uh, at least not in the screen. There, there's, um, after processing, you have two colors. You have a red color and you have this blue color, but the harmonic con noise cancellation doesn't do much to this data set. Um, uh, should have had a better data set, but uh, I tested this with the power line. Let's go for trains because that's what we have in Schiller's Lager. So there's always this, this red on top if he's working. So now he's done. Um, display takes a few seconds, um, but I can show you something else in the uh, in the main figure. He always tells you what base frequency is found, so you can check if there's some. Uh, some some useful stuff going on or, or not useful. So there's but but here's not much harmonic noise in it. I don't know why actually. I thought there's more. It's a little bit surprising. He's not really cancelling a lot of this harmonic noise. Okay. Anyway, um, so you, you would you would go through these these different things um, of processing. And once you have done this, you can you can save as a stack data. So that would uh, stack all the data together and save it in, in a file that you can use afterwards. Or you can also um, save the current state. That's what what Trevor also had. Then you just make a a shot of your of your current memory. This is sometimes useful not to start from the beginning over and over again because it may take time. Uh, you can you can just save the current state, and that is why you can also reload uh, the past state. But now let's just save the data. Just give it a name; doesn't matter. I take a bit. So he's now telling us stacking. Um, And then I do quit. And stepping through the through the other stuff. Um, so what I wanted to show you is let's there, there are two options now: MRS kernel and MRS kernel new. And the MRS kernel new hopefully opens. So it does. Um, so for those who have seen this before, um, there's something added now, and this is. Uh, all this preparation stuff. So what you can do with MRS MATLAB, of course, now is uh, including any type of, of prepolarization. Um, so for, for what we have done, you can you can import all the parameters from field data. Uh, you should be able to remind the to remind the file, but as it is, always you get an error. Um, I'm not sure if I took the right the right version at the moment. In any case, you can just select what you have, which is a diameter of 15, uh, 50 meter, select the number of turns, all the all the things that you have to have. Um, 
you need to select the discretization. Um, it is it is updated if you if you change loop sizes uh, to some some standard way. Um, so you don't you do not really have to worry about uh, this, this, this discretization. Um, you can you can get also the pulse moments from the, from the uh, from the safe data. I don't know why this is not working at the moment, but I don't want to get in this detail. Um, you can anyway select if you go for standard pulses or adiabatic pulses, different pulse sequence, uh, including spin echo and stuff. Um, if you want to have pre-polarization, you can turn this on as well. And then you need to select all these. Uh, all these shapes. Um, so uh, quite a quite a bit of stuff. I don't want to get in all the details, but in any case, you need to have a calculation to make it quick. Um, I do resistive earth because that makes it faster and say make a kernel calculation. I guess I have started the wrong version. Look at your kernel, of course. Excuse me, you, can, you compute the kernels only for the, uh, the Q value in the data set? Yes. So that's why typically you should, uh, you, you can, of course, do, do modeling with MRS MATLAB as well. Then you start not with the processing of the data, then you start with your kernel function. And then you calculate the kernel function and say some Q values that you would like to have. So you can, you can change them here. Uh, so whatever you want to have. Um, and then you calculate your kernel and you go into modeling. So that's, I think that, that that's the way it should work. Um, okay, let me save the kernel. This time it does not remember the correct path. So here we are with the kernel. He tells you that you have saved the call. And then you need you need to do something people sometimes forget, even though most times it is not, not necessarily, or it seems to be not necessary, you still need to fit your your data uh, mono exponentially before you go into the uh, into the inversion. So again, I load the data. Uh, why is it necessary? Um, it is necessary. Oh, you can see it here. Okay, it is necessary because he needs to calculate uh, the, the phase, and he takes the phase from this mono exponential fit, and he needs the phase for uh, for certain uh, for specific types of inversion. So the rotated amplitude inversion needs a phase to correct for, and that's why you need to get it here. Uh, it's not used for any, anything else. So just run it once. Then you can save. You can save it in the same data file. And then you're ready for inversion. the data and then it gives you again a view on the data you can you can change what uh, you like to look at your data set if you want to do complex inversion and you see the complex data set let's go back to amplitudes um, load the kernel I'm afraid he will not like that kernel because I have not taken the field data for this Let's give it a try. Um, you can set up the number of gates you want to have. Um, I run mostly with 50. That works That works fine. You can go below that. So 30 is a good number as well. And then you have an, a, a bunch of different options. Um, you can you can go invert, or you can do inversion with this uh, smooth distribution. That's the original QT inversion. So you have um, both a discretization in, in uh, in water content and decay time. Uh, what I use much more often is the smooth mono that tells you that you just get the, the water content and 
one uh, T2 store time because that runs much faster. And mostly I have rarely, to be honest, I have rarely seen surface NMR data sets with multi-exponential decay. So that's why mostly you're, you're going fine with this, this moment exponential. That's per depth layer. layer. Okay, so it, yeah, good, really good point because I do have seen surface NMR data set with multi-exponential decay. So um, that means for a certain pulse moment, which of course averages over a certain depth volume, you may you may have multi-exponential decay because you're averaging over over two layers. But I don't see it in the in the inversion for certain for certain depth layer. Yeah. Um, to make it a bit quicker, you can pre-integrate your kernel function. Um, then you need to set the number of iterations, of course, and you need to to get a, a, let's say at least a guess for the for the inversion uh, for the for the regularization. Um, and there's also, and I come back to this point later on. Just push run just to see if that works. Okay. And now he's he's stepping through um, the different iterations. <laughs> And that would be the some first final result. If, but but this is always only the starting point. Um, what you need to do then is uh, to test for for an optimal regularization parameter. Uh, and this is what what this button on on run L curve here means. Uh, I don't want to push it now because it takes maybe a little bit too long. Um, he is then changing the, the regularization parameter, runs the inversion again and again, and plots you an L curve. And from this L curve, you can select your, your regularization parameter. Uh, uh, something what I like to show is we have this uh, statistics option here, which uses a, a bootstrapping algorithm uh, behind the scenes. So you can, you can say, okay, let's do uh, five independent inversion runs, and then he's re, uh, rearranging your data set. Um, Let's say two because, and then he's doing inversion with this independent data sets, and that this gives you an idea, not a too bad idea, but an idea about the uncertainty that you have in your in your inversion, which I think is quite quite important thing to do. Uh, so let it let it run. Always always have a look on how good your data is fitted. Um, so you have your amplitude data, so the measured data. This is predicted data. And this is the difference between the data, and it should go into the direction of a chi square of one. Excuse me, just to precise, I understood that uh, you decimate the data set mm -hmm. in order to. Yeah, the, de the decimation of the data set is, is important because um, you don't want to handle a one second record, one second record with a sampling of 50 kilohertz, because that means you have 50,000 data points. This is just not making sense, and that's why you are decimating or you're you're gating. Uh, yeah, and and I think the uh, the number of gates they are logarithmic based, and I go fine with uh, with a value of 50. But you could go below 30 is in most cases sufficient as well. Okay, then you get an idea of your uh, of your uncertainty. So this is the smooth inversion. Um, you can also go for a plug inversion, and there you have mostly the same parameters, um, but you need to have different values for this. Uh, for plug inversion, you always have to define the number of layers that you have, um, and what we use for the for the for the plug inversion is. Uh, is a gen genetic algorithm, so it's a kind of kind of grid search and making evolution, um, and it's always good to to limit the uh, the model space this this algorithm is working on. So you should have an idea about the number of layers and layer thicknesses that may appear uh, about the water content that is in these layers. Um, if you go to layer presets, you can define a lot more just to limit this. Uh, but to have a quick run, um, number of, number of iterations is always uh, a crucial point. Uh, here you better go for for ranges like fifty. 
Um, and then members and number of populations. Okay. Um, so in this genetic algorithms, you have individuals. And this is uh, what, what is members of a population. And each individual is a certain subsurface model. And these guys are, um, are crossing and evoluting together. And the, the larger this population is, the better it is. Uh, so a, a good value is, uh, is in fact, uh, 5,000. Uh, and like with the bootstrapping in, in this block inversion, we have uh, the way of doing the statistics by having independent populations. Like say, you have an island with a certain population and a completely independent second island. That's what you what you select here. You would say, okay, I have five different islands and they all run in parallel. So this is calculated in parallel. Um, let's go for only one type run. And hope it starts. And what you see, is a few on this on this population. So you see the, the the best one at the moment is already quite close to, to fitting the data square so of one. This is uh, a medium and this is the, the worst candidate you have. And then he is stepping through this iteration and doing the evolution. I, th I think I set it to 10, I hope. Typically, I would go for 50. So now it just needs to plot. Um, I mean, it, it does fit the data already, but um, this is all also telling us, okay, we can more or less fit our data, the ones that I have, I have here, with a more or less homogeneous host space because there's only data in the first 20 meters. And this, this is fitting the data. Anyway, but that's, a, that, that, that's, the, way, that's the way it is. And that's the data set. Okay. Um, yeah, you can, you can save this uh, to an inversion file and recall it from, from whatever, whenever you need it. 